Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ben Caton with Clarity Farms and Grazing 365. Coming to you from Central Arkansas. It's December 17th. We got uh, down to about 25 degrees last night. And uh, we're just a little bit above freezing now. It's probably mid 30s. And we just moved the mob onto what is probably our best winter pasture. A lot of fescue in here not as weedy and if you look here in the foreground we had a surprise last night one of the corrientes calved last night which we don't ever want to calve in december but uh we bought these uh, the last 40 corrientes we bought this last year were supposedly open we've had a couple surprise calves in there not not a big deal it's it's really cute it's a heifer but you know they're born with their spring coat on folks uh, you know, people that want to calve in the winter, calve in January or February in cold environments. Number one, you're fighting nature. And number two, I just don't think from an animal welfare standpoint, that's a great idea. They really, they really do struggle and suffer a little bit if you're going to, if you're going to calve on pasture. Uh, maybe if you have a calving barn or facility, that might be a little different. But anyway, I'll get off that soapbox. Uh, something I wanted to talk to you all about. Uh, is a is a mistake that I made, pretty substantial mistake, earlier this year, and it's really coming home to roost right now. So, uh, yesterday I did a I went through the farm and did an inventory of our grass, and frankly, we're just going through grass faster than what I anticipated. We're just consuming more forage, and that's an issue. Uh, and to give you a little background, uh, this region had a very substantial drought this past summer. We got to D3 status, which is a severe drought. And because of that, there were a, a lot of animals available this summer as folks were downsizing their herd and getting rid of animals. And uh, since we're always two or three months behind our forage, uh, I decided to roll the dice a little bit, take a gamble and purchase some really inexpensive Corrientes to add in with our mob in addition to the Corrientes we already had here on the farm, with the idea that uh, as long as we could catch a rain or two in the month of September, we would grow enough winter stockpile that we could carry those additional animals through the winter. And uh, and then, you know, you know, if you can buy these Corrientes dirt cheap uh, at a fire sale, and they give you a calf the next year, they more than pay for themselves the first year. If you can get a good, uh, a good bull on them and uh, you know, get them bred uh, for, for next year's calving season, which we did. The problem is we didn't catch a rain in September. We got no rain in September. We went from the first week of June to uh, the first week of October with less than a quarter of an inch of rain. And, uh, we're, we're paying the price for it now because we didn't get the stockpile that we were hoping for. So we rolled the dice and my thinking was by buying these additional 40 Corrientes, uh, you know, I might have to feed them each a bale, you know, so if we buy them cheap and, and we're into each of them for 60 or $70 worth of hay over the winter, they more than pay for themselves in the first year, minus our labor. Problem is we're going through grass faster than I anticipated because we just didn't get the stockpile that I thought we were gonna get. And so now we're not looking at 30 days of hay as I anticipated, even as recently as about a week ago. It looks like we might have 50 or 60 days of hay, which really exceeds our, uh, our hay stores. So now we've got the dilemma, what do we do? So what are we gonna do to remedy this mistake? So we rolled the dice, it didn't turn out in our favor, so how do we remedy the situation? Uh, there's several options. We can destock. We can get rid of some of those animals. We can go out and purchase additional hay, additional feed, of, you know, grain, uh, which I'm absolutely dead set against. Or um, we can, you know, we can look at several different solutions and, and really create a hybrid solution where we implement several different, uh, more moderate actions to create a, a substantial whole. And so one thing about our herd right now, uh, we've got about 
45 or 50 cows that are still lactating, that we were going to carry uh, their calves for you know a little bit longer. Some of them we weren't even going to wean. We we're gonna let them wean them off in the spring. Uh, the thing about a lactating cow is they consume a lot more forage. And I suspect that's why we've been burning, it, burning through it faster. So I think the first step we're going to take, uh, we've got some steers on the farm that we're going to get rid of. Uh, we'll keep a few for our own consumption. Uh, but I was gonna carry, oh, I think it was a dozen steers through. We'll actually go ahead and, and pull them out and sell all but two or three of those. So that'll be the first step. That'll save us some forage, but not really a lot. I mean, these are, you know, five weight steer just doesn't, you know, it, it, they go through a bale about every two months on average for us. So, I mean, that'll save us, you know, what, five bales a month. That helps, uh, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't remedy the situation completely, but it gets us one step towards a solution. I think the biggest thing for us is getting these 50 lactating females uh, get their calves weaned and get them to dry up. I think if we do that, uh, right now, if we were just feeding hay, we would need about eight bales a day. If I can cut that down to six and a half or seven bales a day, we've got enough hay and we won't have to go out and purchase additional hay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's like I've said in the past, folks, uh, never farm towards the averages. Never base your decisions off of average rainfall, uh, average temperature, because it's never average. It's always more or less than expected. That's just the weather, that's nature, that's life. And so, you know, we always carry uh, some additional hay for insurance to get us through the winter, just in case we miscalculate, which <laughs> thank goodness we did, because I miscalculated. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's always good to have a plan whether it's for a drought, whether it's for uh, you know, surprises like this. Uh, and, and this is another reason why it's always good to stay two or three months behind your stockpile. It helps, it, it gives you the flexibility you need to adapt and be adaptive. So over the next few weeks, you'll probably see uh, some footage of us uh, gathering up cattle, uh, you know, gathering up some calves to wean them. Uh, we'll be sending some of them off. Uh, for those of you looking for some uh, grass-fed steers with great grass genetics, uh, reach out to us, uh, shoot us a comment below. Uh, we'll have some, we'll have a lot, but we'll have a few. And I can attest that these are, these are animals that have never had anything but grass, water, and mineral their entire life, and mama's milk. But I've, you know, I don't regret making the, you know, rolling the dice and making that gamble. The odds were in our favor. They didn't play out well, but you know, I, I, we make mistakes every day. If you aren't making mistakes every day, you're just not trying hard enough. You're not experimenting hard enough. You're not growing. Um, you know, show me, show, show me someone who doesn't make mistakes and I'll show you uh, someone who has stopped learning. I've got a long list of uh, mistakes I intend to make just once in my life. And uh, fortunately, the list grows every day. So I appreciate all of you watching this video. Uh, the, the response we've had since we've launched our channel just over a week ago has been very humbling. I really appreciate everyone who's subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Also next to the subscribe button is a little bell. If you'll hit that bell, you'll get a notification every time we uh, publish a new video. And that really helps our channel as well. It's one of those things that YouTube looks at uh, is, is not just how many subscriptions you've gotten, how many people are viewing it, but how many people click the bell. So if you haven't done that, please do so. Uh, the comments we've been getting folks have been wonderful. Uh, they've given us some ideas for some upcoming videos. Uh, additionally, we've got some great suggestions, not just on content, but on things that we can do here on our farm to improve. We want to be lifelong learners. And I promise you, there's a lot of folks out there doing what we're doing, but doing it much better than us. So please continue to give the suggestions. They only make us better. So with all of that, I hope all of you have a great weekend. This has been Caton with Clarity Farms, Grazing 365, signing off.